Hello, Mark. Thank you for coming for our interview today. Well, good to be here. Yeah. So your last video that you did with uh, with us has got the most views. So I know this will be another popular video. A lot of people have uh, questions about what's coming up on the NCLEX next. So um, would you mind sharing with us a little bit about uh, what you think is coming up for the NCLEX in the future? Well, the NCLEX uh, Next Gen, as it's called, has been a initiative of the National Council of State Boards of Nursing since about 2017. Uh, in 2017, uh, the, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, which is uh, a national group made up of representatives from each of the 50 states uh, of boards of nursing, plus American Samoa, Puerto Rico, and other territories, the Virgin Islands and others. So it's about 58 different boards of nursing that are under there. So <clears throat> they did a study of what nurses know and what nurses need to know and what new nurses don't know. They surveyed all sorts of people in the community, head nurses, uh, directors of nursing, um, consumers of new graduates, hospitals, public health organizations, and they wanted to find out what do nurses need to know and what do they need to know with all the advances that have come in healthcare over the last 10 years. And I think you you may not realize this, uh, but as old as I am, uh, it's really interesting what's changed in nursing. Uh, the people that you find on a med surge unit now would have been in intensive care back when I started nursing. And the people that are in ICUs <clears throat> are people who wouldn't even survive mm -hmm. back then because we didn't have the technology, we didn't have the medicines, we did, they just, just die. So all these people would die, but now they are the ones that are in the intensive cares and people who would have been in the intensive cares then are now on the unit. So so you can't you can't take a nurse from 1970 and 1980 and plop them down in 2020 and expect them to be able to know even to be even competent. Right. So the logic, the logical consequence of that thought is why would we think that a test, an NCLEX test developed in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, why do we think that test would be valid in measuring today? what nurses need to know. So if a, a nurse from 1970 would be totally unsafe today in the hospital, then why would a test from 1970 measuring that be valid for today? Mm -hmm. So that's the thinking that led to this next generation NCLEX. They didn't sit around and think, how can we make students' lives more miserable? How can we fail more candidates? You know, how can we just be more nasty people? That That isn't what they're, you know, it just makes, that's what, it makes sense that that's what they did. So they took all the, that data from 17 and said, what is it the nurses need to know to be safe and effective in 2020 and beyond that wasn't necessary as necessary back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And one of the areas was critical thinking or clinical reasoning. So the whole NCLEX next gen changes are all centered on measuring your ability to clinically reason. When you're put into a clinical situation, how do you think? How do you respond? What's your process? Not what facts have you memorized? No, no. It's not what facts have you memorized. Do you know the dose of metoprolol? Mm -hmm. Come on. They want to know, do you know when that drug should be questioned or when it's appropriate or, and what should you do if certain negative things occur from it? So it's the clinical reasoning. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the whole reason why they're doing this next gen is to measure in a valid way clinical reasoning so that's and, philosophical beginnings of it 
And um, what do you think the questions are going to be like? How much do we know about how it's going to actually change the NCLEX? Yeah, they were they were on a really good trajectory and and uh, uh, plan until COVID hit, which really messed them up because you understand a change of this magnitude means you have to get thousands of new item things written out there and tested to see how they do for validity and reliability uh, parameters. And so you've got it, that takes two, three years to do. Well, those questions don't count because you're just testing them. You're doing, but you give them during real NCLEX exams, but the students don't know their items that are being tested. So they, during COVID, we couldn't spend the time during the NCLEX test for a student graduate to do those experimental questions. So for the first, oh, I don't know, six to nine months after March of 2020, <clears throat> there were no, no testing was done mm -hmm. on these items. So they got a whole nine months behind. Mm -hmm. They started putting them back in in 2021, small amounts, and they're growing in 2022, but the truth is they're still way behind as far as implementing these changes, okay? So um, one thing I do wanna say before I get into the exact types of items you're gonna see is that the official word on the NCLEX next gen is that they'll say it is likely, and that's the key word, likely and they italicize it in all of their literature it is likely that changes will occur april 1 2023 now they've never used that word likely before that word likely has surfaced in the last six months or so mm -hmm. so at this point in time the ncsbn isn't exactly certain in what format and to what percentage that overall package is going to roll out. My suspicion, my best guess is they will roll out part of it April 1, 2023, and then they will implement it in stages over those next three years mm -hmm. so that by the uh, April 1 of 2026, it will be uh, fully implemented. So I think those of you that are graduating this May and this April and whatnot, you're going to see new items and they are going to count, but it just is implausible, just not, not reasonable to expect them given all the delays and such that's happened for them to roll it out 100% right on April 1, 2023. And it may not be. So that's a decision. Right now they're meeting, not right now, but on April 16th through 19th, here in another week or two, the NCSBN. Do you mean August? August. August 2016. August, August 16th, August 19th of 2022, the NCSBN House of Delegates, which is two reps from each area, will meet and they will then say how far we're going to go and what we're going to implement but what they won't be very specific they'll just be very general there is another group a subcommittee of them that meets in december of 2022 that will specify exactly what will happen on april 1 2023. So we won't know exactly what is happening till 2023. I mean, I'm sorry, till December 2022. Mm -hmm. December 2022. So if you hear specifics, take them, you know, with a with a dose of caution until this word comes out in December. Okay. So just so you know where it's at. Yeah. Um, if you want to re-ask your question that you asked that I didn't oh. answer. And oh, else. that's okay. <laughs> um, 
So I, I guess I was asking what types of questions do you think they're going to be asked? Yeah. What's happening now is they have a special test session of, of 20 to 30 questions or so. They're all new format type questions. And people are selected just according to a certain formula. And it has nothing to do with whether you pass or fail. And it, it doesn't, it, you aren't chosen because you passed or failed. And you aren't chosen uh, because of anything that you did right or wrong. And it does the, how you do on those 20 or 30 questions does not in one bit influence your score. At the point in time, they give you those 30 questions. When you start those 30, 20 questions, the computer program has already decided 100% whether you've passed or failed. Okay. So that's been decided. That's been reported to the NSSB, uh, to the Pearson people in New Jersey, the, the clearinghouse. And then you start your, your experimental ones. Now, of course, they're going to be radically different than what you took in the real test that you just finished because they're trying to test these new formats. So they're all going to be new format and they have to give you questions from easy all the way up to very, very hard, regardless of how you perform on them because they have to give you the whole range of difficulty of questions. So, yes, you are going to get questions in that section that you've never seen before. And they're going, some of them are going to be unbelievably difficult. And probably half of them are going to be, to be of greater difficulty. Half of them are going to be of greater difficulty or more than what you would have to get right to pass. So, they're going to be two, tw two times as many of them are going to be way harder than what you need to pass. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to, that's going to be a very brutal experience for you. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? It's going to be, you're going to go, Oh my goodness. If, if this is what's coming, we're all going to fail. Well, well it's I'm terrifying people. It really is. People <clears throat> are, I mean, the stories are out there and it's scaring people. And the reality is, if that's what's coming, y'all are going to fail. Okay. And so would I. And so would Dr. Sharon. We'd, we'd all fail right. because they're not computer adaptive and they're not designed to see whether you pass or fail. That they Those questions ignore a pass standard. They're just asking you from the easier to the hardest questions they can ask to see how many people get them right, how many get them wrong. Which of these questions only one person out of 20,000 gets right? Do you see? They they just do that. So you have to understand it is so artificial. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. No one will get an NCLEX going in on April 1, 2023. No one from that date on is going to get an NCLEX anywhere near what you're getting in these special research sections. Do you think there will be any of those? Because they're, they talk about them mostly being case study questions. Yeah, uh, they get stuff. those last, you know, those experimental. Do you think those will actually be starting on? There um, are two, April? yeah, there are two kinds of questions that um, we have in the next gen test pool. There are sort of like your standalone questions that, that are just, they stand alone. Mm -hmm. And then we have case study ones, ones that are connected to a case study. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna see a lot is on, on the next gen is the split screen. You're gonna see a case study over here with tabs. The tabs will have, you know, history and physical, physician's notes, nurse's notes, vital signs intake out you know just like you would on a normal electronic medical record you have tabs that you can go to you know mm -hmm. and you've seen those in the hospital so that's nothing that shouldn't shake you because you've seen that before okay so they'll on one half the screen will be that and then the other half will have questions that that uh uh apply to that and then the next question will feed off of that one and then the next question will 
will follow up on that. So there are those questions where more than one question comes from the same case study. And then there's ones where you just get a situation on the left and the answers appear on the right, which is not really any different than what you had. Now, I do want to tell you, the current um, official word on that, and this could change, you understand, this can change here in, next week when the, the delegates meet, and it could change in December when the committee meets, the finalizes everything. The, the current status is 85 to 90% of a person's test after April 1 mm -hmm. will be from the old NCLEX test pool. Mm -hmm. So most of you after April 1, only 10% of your test is going to be these new questions mm. only 10 percent now those special research sections that people have been taken a hundred percent of those tests are the new format do you see where where the hysteria is reasonably coming from right right <clears throat> so you these new questions if you take a hundred questions 90 of them are going to be what you would have had on march 30 of 2023 yeah 10 of them will be new and that means but that's only the average that may mean that only you might only get five yeah. did you see what i'm saying so mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's not <laughs> these new questions are not going to dominate mm -hmm. now the question is even at five percent that could change your score from a pass to a fail. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're right, if you're super, super, super close. Right. If, if that makes so for for you, it may mean something, but I don't want you to think that this is going to, you're going to see these questions one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, because you're not. Uh-huh. <clears throat> how, how can students prepare for this new type of question? Uh, the best thing to do is to know the types of questions that you're going to see, understand what they are, and there are five types, and then get some experience seeing them. Now, I have done some of these new, I've done some uh, several batteries of these new types of questions, mm -hmm. okay? Now, these new types of questions have been, if you've ever taken an SAT or an ACT or a GRE, or any of those standardized tests, which they aren't doing anymore, I guess, that much for college anymore. But oh, they've been around. These have been around. These aren't. And NCSBN did not invent these formats. These formats have been around, oh, as long as I've been around. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, and really, they're just variations on the same few ideas. So if you understand these new formats are just going to be a new way of asking for the same information, mm -hmm. okay? So, so this isn't something radically different. In fact, it's amazingly redundant from what, 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 as a person like me looking at it, I go, well, what's so new about this? It's mm -hmm. just a little fancier. So mm -hmm. I don't think you have to be as nervous, but I can go in. I, I think one of the things we can talk about a little bit is some of these five types of questions yeah. you might see, okay? Yeah. Okay, well, the first one, they give it a big fancy name. It's called Extended Multiple Response, EMR. Like, think electronic medical record. Okay, it's the same uh, mnemonic, EMR, Extended Multiple Response. Well, there are several types of those kinds of extended multiple response. But the number one format of extended multiple response is... Select all that apply. Wow. So one of the five next gen things is nothing more than a select all that apply question. Yeah. All right. And there is a variation though that they do. What you're going to see is they'll say, which of the following are side effects of uh, Mexitil mm -hmm. and select all that apply. And they'll give you, 
at least five options, no more than 10. It's always at least five, no more than 10. You can pick them all or you can pick just one or any number in between. Okay. That you've seen, you know. So you're already 20% understanding what's going on. Now, the other little wrinkle they're throwing in is what they call select then. Not select all that apply, but select then, which they will say, which of the following are side effects of Mexitil? Pick two. Oh. Or pick three. Or pick five. Now, let me ask you, everybody that's listening to my voice, what would you rather have? 50 select all that applies or 50 select ends where you know how many you're supposed to pick. Would you like it better knowing that you're supposed to pick two instead of figuring out how many you're supposed to pick? I probably would. Yeah, I would. If it says select two, I go, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Boom. But if yeah. it says select all that apply, I'm going, I don't know what applies. I, I mean, I can imagine. I, I don't know about you, but in a select all that apply. I can make a case for every single answer on that page if right. given enough time, right? <laughs> I don't know. But if yeah. they if they make it easy on me and say, just pick three, oh, yeah, sure, cool. That one, that one, and that one. Boom, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. You see, and then there's none of this debating back. Well, maybe I should add this one. Well, maybe I should take that one out. Or what about this? So yeah. even if half of the select all that applies go to select N, that's going to make it easier. Do you see what I'm saying? I see that as an improvement for the student, for the graduate. Do you see? All right. So that's that's one. Um, and the select all, select and those are really the, your thinking process on those extended multiple responses are no. You don't have to change a thing. Just apply select at all. Think sec, do what you do for select all that apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I know y'all were hoping that we would do away with select all that apply. No. <laughs> They've spent too much money developing those questions. Yeah. They're not going to throw them out, I guarantee you, because everything boils down to economics. Okay. The other ones are what we call um, enhanced drag and drop. What that means is uh, it's drag and drop, meaning you'll drag a word. Remember I said they're going to have split columns, one side, one side. You'll, you'll drag a word from this side over with your cursor and plop it into this side okay but what they mean by enhanced is they may put for example they'll instead of saying take which your patient is bleeding from his nose and ears what do you do in what order drag and drop the actions on the right into the column on the left in the order you do them. So what you do is you select one and you drop it in one place and then you select it and you plop it next and you select it and you plop it next. Okay. Well, what that means is you're going to use all those, uh, you're going to drag everything on the right to the left. You just have to get the order right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you're going to do now. They do that now. So that's no different. What the enhanced means is, and you're going to hate this, <laughs> you don't have to drag everything from the right to yeah, the Yeah, right. that would hate that. I would hate that. Make it, where the select N makes select all that apply easier, mm -hmm. the enhanced drag and drop makes drag and drop harder. Mm -hmm. Okay. But hey, so what they'll do is they'll say something like this. Um, your patient has had a myocardial infarction. Um, one of the problems that could, depending upon the location and size of the infarct, <clears throat> might develop one of two forms of heart failure. One is right-sided heart failure. The other is left-sided heart failure. Just depends on what arteries in and whatnot, okay? From the symptoms on the right, drag and drop under left-sided and under right-sided what you would expect to see in each. So you'd pick crackles, plop it under uh, left, left side. Mm -hmm. You'd take jugular vein distension, plop it under right. right. You'd take, um, uh, you know, just um, right. pulmonary congestion. Well, we talked about peripheral edema, peripheral edema. Yeah. Yeah. So you would select 
uh, that see if you know the differences between. They could say a person had diabetes mellitus. They are prone to peripheral vascular disease. There is arterial peripheral vascular disease and venous peripheral vascular disease. Right. Click on the symptoms on the right and drag them underneath which one they support, arterial disease or venous disease on the left. Do you see how that goes? And you just plop and drag yeah. Got it. So that's sort of, it's almost like a, a double select all that apply question. Yeah, you know it's like I mean? a double select all apply. Or what yeah. you have to do, what you have to do is you have to say, okay, left sided, select all that apply. Right. Then think to yourself, right sided, select yeah. all that apply. So it's like a double select all that apply. Yeah. Which isn't really what you want. But <laughs> hey, we, we, in our review, we teach hypokalemia versus hyperkalemia. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? And right. so they put hyper and hypo. And you, you are, if you go to our review, you have the principles that already tell you what to plop under which and what not to plop mm -hmm. under which. Mm -hmm. Do you see? So it's your prince. See, to some extent, our review focuses on teaching principles rather than facts. Right. And a lot of reviews teach facts rather than principles. Mm -hmm. And these, these uh, extent, these multiple, this next generation question actually favor people who know their principles more than Absolutely. who know the facts. So right. that's, I, I, you say, what are we going to change in our review? Well, the review, our review has started moving eight years ago toward where this is headed anyhow. So we're going to have, we're going to have to change as far as content goes, practically nothing, mm -hmm. but we can get into that later. Oh, but then I did want to talk to you about um, uh, drop down. Mm -hmm. I like drop down. I, I, drop down is fun, but some people don't think it's fun. They often call them close and close ration, mm -hmm. close and rational, close meaning C L O Z E. Right. Close. And what they would do is they would say, what they'll do is they'll give you a paragraph. And this won't be, this won't be a case study thing. It'll just be a paragraph. And it'll say, uh, people with acidosis had exhibit, and then there'll be a blank. And you'll click on it and dropping down from it, drop down will say uh, tachycardia, bradycardia, mm -hmm. and atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and you'll have to click one. Right. And I like those two. What I like about it is, is it's really nothing more than two multiple choice yeah. questions. They're not right. select all the applies. It's not select all right. the applies because you only select one. Right. Okay? But instead of having four options that you have to choose from, it's only two. Right. Yeah. It's only three. But you may have like three blanks per question. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. That you have to to fill in. So that, that more difficult is that you're – it's like three multiple choice questions mm -hmm. in one multiple choice question. Right. But, they, but if you look at them, don't freak out because they're still just multiple choice questions. Right. And if you can do a – let me ask you this, everybody that's tuned in. If I gave you a four option, four answer, multiple choice question, and I said, I'm going to tell you what the top two are, top two answers on every multiple choice, I'm going to tell you what the top two answers are throughout this whole test. Would you be excited about that? Would you want me to do that? That's what close does. <laughs> it chops out four and gives you the top two. So yeah. what you got to do instead of freaking yourself out about it, you go, hey, let me use the advantages this is going to give me and let me construct it in my mind as some of this is very positive for the candidate who's taking mm -hmm. the test. It's not making it harder. You think it is because you haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. You see? So those are the drop downs. Uh, then they have the uh, the enhanced hotspots. Mm -hmm. So they'll give you something like this. They'll give you, a, they'll say your patient has pneumonia then they'll say these are all of his symptoms and his labs now highlight because they call it hotspot they'll say highlight and what you'll do is you'll click and you'll drag and it'll like highlight in yellow and it'll say highlight anything that's consistent with this diagnosis of pneumonia mm -hmm. and you'll put fever Mm -hmm. uh, fatigue, short elevated white breath, count, elevated white count, uh, elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, um, 
you know, all of the right. crap, uh, decreased lung sounds in the periphery, ronca. I, I mean, not ronca, that dates me. <laughs> you know, ronca <laughs> vesicular sounds in the uh -huh. periphery. And you're saying, oh my goodness, I don't know all those things. Well, wait, wait. I've got a, Sharon's going to ask me a question. And so calm down, don't freak out. Say, oh, I have to know all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> There's a, there's a good thing coming about that. I have to know all this stuff, okay? Because no, you don't. Okay, and then the last one is a matrix. And what they do is they, they give you, they say your patient has hemophilia. And then down the, they have like a graph, like a call, like anywhere from like two to 10 columns and then five to seven rows down. It's like a table, okay? Mm -hmm. And like the first row says, um, uh, petechiae. And the first column says present. Second column says absent. Mm. Third column says, um, why would you answer this so stupidly? You <laughs> like, and then you have to click one of those boxes, you know, mm. for each like diet. Mm. What's the diet? Regular, oh. NPO, low calorie, high fiber. And you have to click what applies mm. to that? I like that actually. I think that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of I kind of like yeah. it. It's more me, interesting than just multiple choice. Because what it does is it doesn't allow you to read into stuff. Right. It, it, it forces it, it it asks you yes, no, right, present, not present. Um right. you do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And 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 it'll click that. And so what you're gonna see in the future like these prioritization questions where they give you four people and they mm -hmm. ask you to prioritize, they're going to have like six, seven people down the side. And the columns are going to say high priority. I mean, stable, mm -hmm. unstable. And you're just going to go check, 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 oh, check, wow. check, 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 check. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Okay. And you're just going to go right down through mm -hmm. and do that. So mm -hmm. those are the five main. So well, those are really no more than multiple choice either. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, that's like true they, false almost. It's almost like true false. Right. All they have to do is say something like, your patient has hemophilia. What is? What do you see in the diet? You know yeah. what I mean? And then you, you click it. You yeah. know? Um, now, here's the point. Remember in the in, when you had to highlight all the important symptoms? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Out of There may be 15 of them, and you have to mm -hmm. highlight them. Do you remember the enhanced where you have to click all the things that are a high priority or whatever, and mm -hmm. and and the um extend the dragon extended drag and drop. You had to pull everything from over here that's over here, mm -hmm. or select all that apply when you have to select everything, mm -hmm. because they understand that your thinking can be great, but you can make a little mistake right. here and there. But your right. thinking is good. Mm -hmm. You understand, if you're testing facts, what? If you're testing facts, I grade everything. Yeah. Why? If I'm testing facts, every question I ask you has to be scored. Mm -hmm. Because why? I'm testing mm -hmm. facts. But if I'm seeing if you can think mm. like a nurse, you can miss some facts. But overall... I can tell you're thinking like a nurse. Mm -hmm. do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so let me ask you this: those of you that are listening, do you have non-nurse friends? Do you have non-nurse friends? Okay. Now, question: How long does it take you when you converse with them to find out they's not a nurse? <laughs> they are not a nurse because no nurse would ever say or do that. Does it take very long? Mm -mm. No. Now, does that nurse know every fact about nursing? No. Mm -mm. But they still think like a nurse. How? Right. Because you can tell by the yeah. way they an the way they answer, not so much what they answer. Yeah. Do you see? The questions they ask. The questions yeah, the they questions ask. And how right. you respond to them shows mm -hmm. them how you think. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so. When you're measuring clinical reasoning, clinic, critical thinking, it's the way you think and the way you respond to the questions they ask mm. t 
tells them you can think like a nurse, mm -hmm. even though you may not know all the facts. Because mm -hmm. of that reality, that truth, I told you earlier, they're measuring clinical reasoning. Mm -hmm. Because of that, they've said, give them partial credit. Wow. Because as long as we know that they're thinking like a nurse in this question, who cares if they forget about bronchofasciculus right. Right. In, the, in the periphery? Or erythrocyte sedimentation, right? Erythrocyte or something. Sedimentation. Yeah. They know it's a fever. They know it's grapples. Right. They know they're coughing. Right. They've got, and they've got a positive chest x-ray for infiltrates right. or whatever you want to call it. And they'll say, so what they do is in these hot, where you have to highlight, you don't have to get everything. And where you're dragging and dropping, you don't have to get everything. And then maybe mm -hmm. you drag something that you shouldn't have. As long as you're, they will score items if you get enough of them and whatnot to show right. that you know what you're talking about in a generalist way. Because mm -hmm. remember, they're still not going specialty. It's mm -hmm. generalist way. They're going to give you credit for that question. In mm -hmm. this old format prior to April 1, if you didn't get it exactly right. right, you're out. Remember, how many of you get frustrated with the ordering questions? How one many out of lose? order, right. One you out of you, order and you, you lose get it. One out of order, but you get the whole thing generally right, correct? But you mm -hmm. get one right. out of order right. and you miss the whole stinking right. thing, don't you? Yep. NCLEX says, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. They made one out of order, but this list would have only been generated by a person who thinks like a nurse. Because yeah. if I had given it to an engineer, <laughs> it right. would have been all over the map. Right. You see, so while what the concept they're measuring is more difficult and the ways they are asking it are more pervasive and in-depth and getting to your thinking, what they're scoring is your general response to that specific question, not your specific response to that mm -hmm. specific question. Mm -hmm. I because like that. That's specific, that's good news. Yeah, because specific response to specific question doesn't tell them how you think. It mm -hmm. just tells them what you memorized. Mm -hmm. And we all yeah. know people that can memorize, but can't. All of you know nurses who have passed NCLEX, those of you that have had an unsuccessful time, you know nurses who have passed NCLEX the first time and on a real situation where you have to think you can outperform that person mm -hmm. by a million miles because mm -hmm. the old test tests specific stuff, right. specific answers to specific questions, boom, 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 boom. And it's geared toward people yeah. who memorize facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see? So I kind I like of, it. I, I like those changes. I mean, the way you're describing them, I like those changes. They give you partial credit, you know, yeah. they'll give you credit for things that aren't you, so you're gonna get a in other words, all the when you get a, did a select all the reply and you knew five of the answers and you missed one. Mm -hmm. In the old format, you didn't get any credit for knowing those five. And the one you missed may not have even been in yes. any way really significant. Yeah, it may have been just an ancillary yeah, one. Yeah, you know right, I mean? right. Just to differentiate between the people who get the highest scores and those get, that are right. more, more mortals like us, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but now you're going to get mm. credit mm. for, now the reality is, if you order those steps it, where then it, it isn't even getting close to what the... Right core order is, you're going to miss the question entirely. But wouldn't you agree with me? Is that person probably shouldn't be a nurse? Right. If you're not checking all the appropriate yeah. stuff before you hang blood, I mean, that person is, you know, scary, right? Exactly. Exactly. Right. So uh, I, I hope you kind of get a feel for what, what's the purpose of it to measure mm -hmm. clinical reasoning. What's, what's the, uh, how pervasive are these new format questions is going to be probably about 10% of your test. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and it may not even be that who knows, yeah. uh, come December. Um, what are the types? Uh, really three of the types are just a, a, a variation of what you've already seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you could have, 
you have the information and knowledge and ability to answer them. Two of them are going to take a little practice. So you need to practice some close questions, C-L-O-Z-E, some of those yeah. um, enhanced drag and drops too. And you're probably going to want to do some grids just to, to be sure yeah. you know what's going on. So that's where clinic reviews is. What I'm doing now mm -hmm. is I'm changing the review to add more of those kinds okay. of things so that when we, I, if anybody's been to my reviews, what we do is we give you principles and information and general guidelines on how you're supposed to think in this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, like how you deal with acid base imbalances, how do, how do you right. negotiate those? What, what should be principles should you use to answer questions? Then what we do is we go back and if you look at it, they're all select all, we go back and do questions. They're all select all that apply. They're all multiple choice. Okay. After April, well, starting maybe earlier than April one, yeah. we're going to, you're going to see some of these new format questions in the, that we do practice. in the review itself that you practice. So, you know, okay? so you don't anticipate the content or the, the concepts, the principles that they need to know. You don't anticipate that changing in any significant that way. That won't change. The content is going to be 100% the same. They have said that. There are no content changes mm. in NCLEX. So you're not going to – well, I, 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 let me back it up. The way it goes in NCLEX is every three years they evaluate and they change areas as practice changes. Mm -hmm. Now, there are going to be some new content areas – on NCLEX April 1, 2023. Maybe like it's it's usually one less than 1% of the test. Mm -hmm. It's like half of 1% of mm -hmm. the test day of new stuff every three years. But that would have changed on right. April 1, 2023, even if there had been no idea of a next gen. Yeah. So there are some content changes. Like last time, they put interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary care in, a lot more on organ transplant and donation, a lot more on um, uh, uh, terror, bioterrorism and communicable disease, you know, a lot more on that, that stuff. But we added those. So we're going to, as we find out what's, what the new plan is, and we'll know what the new plan is, uh, probably the month before April 1, because that December meeting is when they put out the new revised test plan. Okay. It's like 130 pages long mm -hmm. that we read as right. reviewers to make sure we're covering everything. And what we'll do is we'll do a, see what, what's new, what, what, oh, that's new. Oh, that's yeah. the same old, that's the same, yeah. but oh, that's new. Yeah. And we'll look at that and that's legal because they put that out. It's a public yeah. document and we will make sure that we will cover the significant things from what's new, but we would have done that anyhow. Right. So look for a look for a change uh, starting in February, probably probably new books, uh, same ideas, same basic things, content yeah. with a little bit of new, but forming it so that you we can prep you for the and next gen. All right. Well, I think that's all good news. I think that's. Um those sound like good, good changes. I, I think they should have had partial credit probably for a while now. I think it's been unfortunate they haven't. So I think the, the question, the score decreases that you have because of the new for your unfamiliarity with the 10% of new format mm -hmm. will be over outweighed by the positive score effects of the partial credit phenomenon. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, I think this is great information. I appreciate you talking to me. Uh, the reason I have a different studio in my back is I'm in LA doing a review. So I'm in my Airbnb. If people are wondering why I have a different background. So, um, all right. Thank you so much. You're welcome.